Hello everybody and welcome back to Robert's Reviews. If you guys remember, one of the first reviews that I put on here of something recent was for The Devil All the Time. Um, I have the screenplay right there. Um, if you guys remember that, you might not. It was a long time ago. It was like eight months ago or something like that. Uh, it was the first new release that I released. Um, although I was a week late because they moved the release date without telling me. But uh, I was a week late on that. But it did come out and it was the first like new release that I watched um, in the year of 2020. And I loved that movie. Some people don't really like it. I love it mainly because it is a character-based narrative. And I love character-based narratives. And it was really creepy and really fun to watch. So I decided to buy the book. And uh, I read it. And it's really good. And I was like, I can talk about this. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and make a video just talking about the book and the movie and discussing them and seeing which one was better. What are the differences? So spoilers ahead for The Devil All the Time book and movie. Without further ado, let's get right into the discussion. Let's start the discussion off by talking about the movie, okay? So, not not this. Uh, I love movies. There's Tom Holland, Bill Skarsgård, Jason Clark. I mean, Sebastian Stan. It's just a whole bunch of really great actors. Um, and it, it's so fun and, and awesome to watch. So, spoilers ahead. And, like, basically this kid is like, Ah, uh, my father is crazy because he, he's murdering animals and stuff. Uh, well, one animal was his dog. Um, and then he kills himself after his wife dies, um, and then Arvin moves out and he goes to live with his grandparents and stuff. And basically there's like four plot lines that all weave and interconnect with each other, and it's really cool to watch. Uh, it is a little long, it's like two hours and twenty minutes, something like that, um, but it doesn't feel dragging. A lot of people say it feels dragging, but I don't think it does, because it's a character-based narrative, right? So we have these parts where we're focusing on the characters, right? We don't really care about what's happening in the plot because we're like, wow, this character development's really cool and we're learning a whole lot about them. And I think that's more important to me, and I think it should be more important to general audiences, than a fast-paced narrative, right? Because if you're having a slow-paced narrative that isn't based on characters, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Because if you're basing your narrative off of events, that's the problem, right? Because if you're basing your narrative off events, right, you're, you're waiting for event, 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 event. But here in The Devil All the Time and other similar movies about characters, right? We're like, we need to learn more about these characters. So we delve deep into them. And then from there, the story emerges automatically, right? Because we have these cool characters. You put them in a room, what's going to happen? And like, it just plays itself out. It's so cool. And I gave this movie an A+. I loved it. I loved this movie. Um, it's on Netflix. If you guys want to check it out, it really is pretty awesome. Uh, let's talk about the book now. The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock. Uh, it is a really, really good book. It's only like 315 pages or something like that. Um, it's really, really solid. Yeah, it's like 310, 307. Um, and let me tell you, it is extremely similar to the movie. Like, really similar. There's only a few key differences I want to talk about. First, um, Willard, who is played by Bill Skarsgård in the movie and is Arvin's father, is way worse in the book. Right, because in the movie he just kills Jack, which is Arvin's dog. Um, that's the only sacrifice he makes to save his wife. In the book, he kills probably hundreds of animals and also a human person and Arvin's dog, Jack. So it was like incredible to read because I'm sitting there reading it and I'm like, okay, waiting for him to kill Jack because. I've, re I've watched the movie, like, he's gonna kill Jack, but it's way worse than that, because he's like, yep, I just go around and I find roadkill, and, like, I found animals, and I just kill them, and I dump their blood all over the site, and, like, it's horrific, and it is extremely gory and really, really good, um, and that's, like, the first good chunk of the book, it's just about that, really, um, and it's really cool. And then another really, really key difference is Jason Clark's character. Um, I actually forget his name, but uh, I want to say it's Calvin, but I know it's not Calvin. <laughs> um, but essentially, it's, it's a guy that walks around and takes photographs of people and is really, really, really gross and weird. Um, but essentially, what happens in the book is it's way worse because he's just really this awful person. He's like super overweight and chunky and he's got this unscathed beard and like he's just super gross he doesn't shower very often and like he'll like 
it, I can't even explain it on YouTube because it's too gross. Um, and I might get like really yelled at for it. So I'm not going to. Um, it's nasty. He does some nasty stuff. Um, and in, in the movie, he does some nasty stuff. He's, he's obviously, we're not saying he's not bad, but he's really gross and weird and ugh. Um, they don't show a whole lot of it in the movie. They don't show a whole lot of their killings. They talk about a whole bunch of them in the book. Like, I'm telling you a whole bunch of them in the book. It's insane. Um, it's so cool. It's, it's awful, but it's so cool. Uh, some other differences, um, the Roy Lafferty, um, the, the preacher guy who dumps the spiders on him, is pretty similar for the first part of the book. Then they move on, and he, like, he traverses the country uh, with his crippled friend, and he ends up going, joining the circus, and then he ends up a work, woodworker, and then his buddy dies, right, the, the crippled guy, which doesn't happen in the movie. Um, he just runs away from him. And in the, mo in the book, he dies. Like, the crippled guy dies. So then Roy's like, all right, well, I think it's time that I go back and I try to find my daughter. Uh, and that's where they pick him up, the, uh, the, the rapists. Um, which is interesting because it's completely different in the book, right? Because in the book, he's just like, he leaves his crippled friend for no reason, uh, which is really dumb and really annoying. I get it, but it's really dumb and really annoying. Um, and it wouldn't have been too hard to include in the movie, although I understand that it wasn't important and it really, we really didn't need to have it there. Um, so I do understand. And his name is Carl. Um, uh, no, 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 what's his face? Jason Clark's character was named as Carl. But yeah, those are like the main key differences. There's there's a few other differences, but nothing like that different. And some of it's like word for word. Like the pastor thing is not word for word. It's not even in the book really. They discuss the chicken livers and all that kind of stuff. But in the in the movie, it's better. It's better in the movie. I promise you. Pattinson is better in the movie than he is in the book. Although in the book, he also rapes a lot more people. It's rough. Um, this is on Amazon for like $12. Want to check it out? And the movie is on Netflix. Want to check it out? Um, which I highly recommend you do because it's really good. Now, as to whether or I would recommend the book or the movie, this is important. Um, it depends, right? So if I only have two hours, the movie is going to do just fine. It's a it's a good movie. It, it definitely shows the book off in a good light. Um, it is basically how I would have done a, a movie adaptation because they did cut some things out and they made it a little bit less harsh on the eyes, um, which is good. Um, so that was nice that they were able to do that. Uh, and I think it's a really, really good representation of the book. However, I do think the book is slightly better in terms of what you get from it. Um, although I understand, you know, it took me like probably a total of like six or seven hours total to read it over the course of like a week. Um... But yeah, if you have time to read the novel, read the novel. It is really good. And I do plan on reading um, the the other one he has called Knock'em Stiff, uh, which is set in the same place as this one. So I might go ahead and check that one out at some point in the future. Um, but yeah, those are basically my thoughts between The Devil All the Time, the book, and the movie. Um, let me know what you guys thought about the book or the movie and or the movie in the comments below. I love talking about it. And looking forward to the next book versus movie thing. I have Cherry right there. I did just finish that recently. That movie, that, that review, uh, that video will come in the future. Probably not until like June because I don't really have time to upload it because the schedule is insane. I wish you could see my schedule, but I don't want to spoil or anything. But like, as you can see, it's it's packed. Look at May. It's just every single day is full already. So I don't want to add more to it. But in the future, you will get a cherry one. I'm in the middle of reading Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda because I am starting the Simon verse, which is it basically uh, it started with this one and it goes on to like two other authors as well. Um, and then after I read that one, I'm going to go ahead and start The Hate You Give, which is the second book in the Simon verse. And uh, I'm going to check out Love Simon the movie and The Hate You Give movie. And I'm going to go ahead and make movies. Of, I'm going to make. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to make uh, videos about those. Um, at the end of the, the Simon Verse, I want to make a whole video about the Simon Verse, rank all the books, um, and I'm also going to watch Love Trevor, I think it's called. Um, I don't remember what it was. That's on uh, Hulu. Watch both seasons of that. Once I watch the books, because they are based on books, um, and once I do all of that, I will upload all of that stuff for you guys to watch. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, that's going to do it for me today. Looking forward to the rest of the week, well, starting next week. Uh, we have The Return of the King on Monday, The Revenant on Tuesday, Cloak and Dagger Season 1 on Wednesday, Reservoir Dogs, we're starting the, the um, Tarantino series on Thursday, and we're watching Super Bad on Friday, which is a request. And over the weekend, we'll have Velvet Goldmine, and we're going to be ranking every Steve Carell movie 
ever made. So make sure you guys are staying tuned for that. I'm really excited for those videos. I hope you guys are too. And as always, keep watching movies and television. Stay educated, and I'll see you guys in the next video.